every Power Automate desktop flow should have a config where we store the workflow settings in. This makes it very easy to maintain workflows. We can also have business users with access to the config, but not to the actual code. Very convenient because then we will have no unwanted edits of our Power Automate desktop flows. Let me show you how we can set up first a config for a single project and then a config framework, which you can use for all your workflows. We're only going to build it one and then we will of course reuse everything. Here I created a Power Automate desktop flow called Star Wars Demo. Please do the same and do all the same things with me today. You will learn so much faster. Then we need to create the config. Go to your start menu, search for File Explorer, go click it. That will open up your files. We will need to talk about where we want to place the config. Usually I will place it in Documents, so I'll find that, but you can place it anywhere you want. If more users need to have access to it, make sure you choose a drive and a folder where those users have access to. That could be a network drive. So in here, my documents, I'll just right click, say new, folder, and then we will give it a name. Power Automate Configs, a hyphen, and then do not delete. So I don't accidentally delete it. Then I'll click enter. Now we have the folder then we'll double click to open it. Here, our configs will go. We will have one config per workflow that will be named the same as the actual Power Automate desktop workflow. So here I right click, I'll say new, and I'll choose a Microsoft Excel worksheet. I choose Excel because it's very easy to edit values in here. Everyone can do that, even the business users. You can of course also choose a text file, for example, in a JSON format. I recommend using Excel and that's what we'll be doing here in this guide. Then we will give it a name. So this one will have the same name as the actual flow. It's called Star Wars Demo. I'll click enter. I'll have this Star Wars Demo.xlsx. This is just the extension. And that is just because here in view, I'll choose to show and then I'll have the file name extensions. You might just have this. So that's why and here I'll enable it again. I like to have those. That's just the only thing that you might have different. So now we have it and I can double click to open it. That will open up the sheet. It's called Arc1 or Sheet1 at yours. Let's just first rename that. So I'll right click, rename, and here I'll call this one Constance. It's very important that you do this with me. Then we will have one column header called key and another one value. Here are our settings will go in. So the setting will have a name, that will be the key, and then the value will be the settings actual value. Let's create a few different key value pairs here. The first one, that will be the API endpoint. We're going to create an example with a Star Wars API uh, workflow where we will choose the invoke web service, could be anything. Then I also want a UL, might also want an environment, and I want a noti notifications settings. So first we will need an API endpoint value. I've uh, found a Star Wars API here. It's free, so you can also use it. Just go to this URL or simply just find it in the description below and copy the URL over to our config. Then we go up here, control V, paste it in and we have it here. Let me also resize this by double clicking it. So here I'll right click remove hyperlink. It's not necessary, but I like to have text values here in my config instead of clickable links because I often try to click in and that will, will be a little bit confusing. We'll need a UL. So let us just put in something like HTTPS Anasiensen org. Again, right click remove hyperlink not needed for our config. You can uh, have these clickable links in your config if you want. This one will be testing and the notification settings. That could be an email. In my place, I'll just have my own email like this. Again, remove the hyperlink. In this particular uh, lesson that I've created for you today, we will only use the API endpoint, but I choose to fill in three more. So you can see we can have more values in the config. Usually in a real life project, 
that is not an example like here, I will have between five and 10 different key value pairs. Remember to save it and then we can close. Go to the file explorer again and we need to get the path of this config folder. So shift right click and then choose copy as path. We now have the path to this folder in our clipboard. It's very important that you press shift on your keyboard and then right click with your mouse. Otherwise you won't see the copy as path. We can go to Power Automate Desktop. Here we have a Star Wars demo flow. First, we will have a variable that will hold the name. We cannot get that automatically with an action. So that's why we just do it manually. Here you will have the work flow name and the value will correspond to this one up here. That will be every time you create a flow, you will have a workflow name variable with the workflow name in the value. So Star Wars demo like this. Then we will create the subflow where the config is created. So if this was a real life flow, you will have your usual flow here and then we will have a subflow where our config would be created and initialized. And subflow is simply just a child flow, which we can call here from main. Then the subflow will be performed and we'll come back to the main. Go up to this drop down where it says subflows, click new subflow and we will call this one config. This is our subflow. The first thing we will need to do is to have a path to the actual config. We created that and we have it in the clipboard. The name will be config path and the value control V to paste in the path. Delete the two quotation marks like this and click save. Now we want to read the Excel sheet and we want to take the key value pairs from there and paste it into a format that Power Automate Desktop can use. In our case, a JSON format. What, how can we do that? We can do that, this with actions that will take a long time and will be difficult here and there. But let me show you a trick. So search for a run VB script. And a VB script is simply just a little bit of code that we run that can do all this for us because yes, I have created this for you. So go to a browser and I have a link for this text file here and it's in my Google Drive. So simply just the link is in the description below. So go here. What you do here is to copy everything, mark it, control C, make sure you have everything. Then you go back to Power Automate Desktop. The VB script to run, control V here uh, like this. And then the variables produced is called the config as JSON. And let me just show you what this script does. And I can scroll a little bit up here if I can catch it. Here it is. We are opening an Excel workbook. And here we use the variable called config path. We have it here. The workflow name, we also define that in the main. So we're using two variables here. We read in the constant sheets. Then we start at row two since we have column headers. And here we are doing reading everything where we will um, replace, for example, one backward slash with two backward slashes because that is required in a JSON format. We are creating this uh, JSON format with the key value pairs where we'll also have the quotation marks and the colons between them. And finally, we are outputting them to Power Automate Desktop and they will get stored in config as JSON. I can click save here. So when we have this JSON, we also want to convert it to a custom object. In that way, Power Automate Desktop can work with those. So here I'll find a convert JSON to custom object. The variable used, that will be config as JSON here. And down here, let's rename this to config as custom object. So I'm just renaming the variables so they make sense. They again, easier to maintain. If you want to learn all the best practices in Power Automate Desktop, I created a video about that. Click it up here in the right corner. Now back to this one here. So this is all that is needed to read the Excel into a custom object that Power Automate Desktop can use. And again, you can actually use this uh, config path. You can, instead of having created a variable, you could have used it inside the script. I just prefer to have it here. It makes it easier to update. Now we just need to, from the main, we need to call the config subflow. 
So up in actions, find a run subflow here. Click the drop down and find the subflow called config. We can click save. Now let's try to run it. And you will see that in a few seconds, we have a config because if I go over to flow variables and find the config as custom object, I'll open it. We now have our config in a nice custom object. This means that we can refer to this variable and one of these keys to get the value out. And then if we have something to change in this workflow, we simply just update the Excel sheet. And then the next time the flow runs, it will have updated values here in our config. That's how easy it is. Let me show you how we can use it. So we go to main. So after we have this config, we can choose to have an invoke web service that will make the API call. So drag it in here. We need a URL and we find the URL. We created that called API endpoint. And that was in our, as in our config. So in config as custom object, then we'll have a hard bracket, a single quotation marks. And here you will say API endpoint, single quotation mark and a hard bracket method will be get that says that we get some data. And then in the accept, we will have a JSON. We're going to look for the web service response. So we go down here to variables produced and let me just disable the two other ones. So we don't confuse ourselves. Sometimes you want to use them. But for our simple case, this will just be an API call. We just want to see the config works. And then we'll do some more advanced things afterward. Try to run it. And now we're using um, a value from our config as custom object. So if we go over here to web service response and double click, you can see that we actually get a response back from this API endpoint. It's a lot of data um, about Star uh, Wars starships. Uh, let us just uh, leave it there. It's also which film they were used in and, and a lot of other things. That's not the important takeaway from this lesson. We just saw that we can get a value from the config and use it in our workflow. Usually we want to reuse as much as possible. Now we created a config in which we can use here. Um, but instead of creating it each time that we are going to create a workflow, I much rather want to have created it once. So I'll go back to Power Automate Desktop here and then I'll create a new flow. I'll call this one build config. This will be the flow that we will use each time we create a new workflow where we have a config. I have a config in almost all my flows that will look like this. So it's empty right now. Here. And let's go back to the Star Wars demo to the config here. Copy these three guys here, mark everything, control C, and you can always do control A, control C, just like you do in Excel when you copy things. Go to the build config. Control V, paste them in. You will have a, an error here where it says that um, the workflow name doesn't exist and we're using that in the VB script. We're, we're going to do that, that since this will now be a separate flow, we will use input and output variables. An input variable is simply just an, a variable that we put in whenever we call this uh, desktop flow. So go over to input output variables, click the plus and click input. Here, you will say workflow name, market, control C, paste it in here as well. The data type will be text. So now we have that. That one we will send in whenever we call it. But we also get a variable back called config as custom object. That will be a custom object. So we will create that as an output variable instead of a flow variable. So click the plus, click output here. And here you will say config as custom object. Remember to change the data type to custom object. Mark this, paste it in here and click save. It will ask you if you want to merge the flow with the actual output. Yes, please. It will get moved up here. We are now done. Now we have a template for all our configs. So I'll click save here. I will uh, close it again. So we're back to the Star Wars demo. Now we can uh, delete the entire config subflow. We can do that by clicking the subflows, clicking these three dots and say delete. Yes, please. We'll also delete this run subflow action. So I'll delete that. We will have an error here because now our custom config as custom object doesn't exist yet. 
but it will do because now we will call the build config desktop flow. And let me again repeat what we did here. We build a new flow that we will call. It will look exactly like the child flow except for the input output variables, but now we will call that. And that makes it very easy to reuse because each time we build a new flow, we will simply just have a run desktop flow that will run our config. So we will not have to create the config each time. And since the config is dynamic, we will just do this. So here you will choose the build config. We will have an ingoing uh, variable called workflow name. We have it up here. So workflow name. And here you can see the variables produced is called config as custom object. That was the output variable that we defined. Then we'll click save. Now everything is in place. Um, we have deleted the config subflow, we can save it. So each time you want to use a config, you uh, create it in the config folder. That one was here, give it the same name as here. And then in your flow, simply just have a set variable with the workflow name and the name of this. And then you will run the desktop flow called build config. That is all you need. Everything is taken care of. Let's try it again just to see that it works. So now we're just calling another desktop flow instead of a child flow. Again, you can see we have our web service response here and we have our cost config as custom object created here. That's how easy everything is. If you want to know more about all the best practices in Power Automate Desktop, then I created a very advanced video for you here. I definitely think you should watch it. That will improve your Power Automate Desktop game. Also, my free RPA developer community is here. We have more than 8,000 RPA developers ready to help you with your Power Automate desktop solutions.